Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Rent Prep for Landlords. My name is Eric Worrell with RentPrep.com and I am joined today by Andrew Schultz who has a new background. I morning. do, yeah. Um, I'd actually posted on, I don't know if you saw it Eric because it was over the weekend. I posted something up on the, the Rent Prep group. I actually did just a quick sweep video of the, the studio that I'm in. Yep. And by studio, I mean I'm, I'm in my home office as opposed to my car today. <laughs> or uh <laughs> what have you or in my actual office but no i've uh this is something that eric and i have been talking about for a while is wanting to get or i wanted to get a little bit nicer broadcast set up and i finally finally just got around to doing it i finally got around to, to biting the bullet and buying some equipment um as of right now i have I can't even turn the camera around because I my the rest of my office is a disgusting mess right now. <laughs> but, oh, yeah. um, <laughs> I've got basically right now just the two umbrella lights facing me and then the backdrop behind me. Uh, and I can green screen. This computer's not really set up for it. So we'll be probably a couple weeks down the road, we'll be able to do a little bit more with the green screen and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, but Maybe I'm super we'll get, pumped about this. We'll get like specific questions and then we can be like, we're in Texas. And, <laughs> you know, do like the uh wayne's world kind of thing you know yeah well, i'll have to get a we're in a box Delaware. of prop hats or something like that i can get a big cowboy hat for texas questions yeah what is, the, what is it ohio florida is it texas ohio florida the game they play on Tread reagan yeah i think so yeah yeah it's a police blotter and you have to figure out right what what state it happened in. right what's yeah what state it happened in and it's always like ohio texas i think it's ohio texas or florida are the big three that they uh that they always use Oh, yeah. there's Jennifer. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we got some questions here to get to today. Uh, let's start with one from Anke. So she has a question that she posted in the Rent Prep for Landlords Facebook group. If you're not familiar with it, check it out. Mm -hmm. uh, and she said, and this one, I'm very curious what you're going to say on this because I had no idea when she asked this. So she said, would you rent to an LLC? Anyone have experience with that? Any advantages or disadvantages? Thank you. So Andrew, if you could explain what she means by renting to an LLC and what your opinions are with that. So I'm assuming it's somebody who's looking for a like a residential lease, but they want uh, they want it under an LLC name for some reason. Maybe it's a company that's paying for um, an individual's tenancy, you know, their rent as part of their compensation package or a, a corporate rental or something like that. Uh, as far as renting to an LLC goes, we've done it. I have no problem with it. The one thing that you definitely want to make sure that you do when you rent to an LLC is have a personal guarantor behind that. Um, we have one, actually, I can't give too many details out, but we do have one of those currently. And what we're doing is the um, lease is in the LLC name, and then there's a personal guarantor backing up that LLC lease. So we do still have one individual person who's on the hook in the event that there's damages or unpaid rents or something like that. And that person went through our screening process just the same way as anybody else would. Um, and then that's how we were able to to put it together with the LLC being the one on the lease and then having the personal guarantor. So we screen them just the exact same way as we would a normal tenant and then just put it under the LLC name. Okay. Um, one thing to keep in mind is if it's an LLC, you may want to consider getting a copy of their uh, operating agreement and you may want to have some kind of a resolution from the LLC authorizing whoever signing the lease to actually sign the lease. Okay. So in a single member LLC, that's not a big deal. Um, so if it's somebody, it's just a one person LLC, obviously they own it, they own 100% of it. They can obviously sign a resolution authorizing them to sign the lease, no big deal. But if you're dealing with a bigger company or something like that, you may need a, you know, you may need the operating agreement showing who the, the authorized members are to sign on behalf of the LLC. And then have one of those people actually act as the as the guarantor to the lease, or multiple people. If you've got a couple people that can sign, maybe get more than one person on there as a uh, as a guarantor just to protect yourself. But oh. yeah, I wouldn't have any concerns running to an LLC as long as you can as long as you can get a guarantor on the back end. Okay, very good. I think that answers that question plenty fine. <laughs> plenty fine. Yeah. So going on to this next question, uh, Emily asks, she says, how do you handle job loss during tenancy? I didn't put the mm -hmm. entire post on here, but she had a situation where it sounds like she's got a pretty nice rental with almost 2,500 bucks a month. Uh, somebody flew across country um, for this rental six months mm -hmm. in, they lost their job. So she's wondering, I think specifically on how to handle this as far as renewing a lease. 
because uh, it sounds like they're good runners. They're still paying on time. They want to stay. Mm -hmm. And it was what was the amount on the lease? Like it was expensive. It was like twenty five hundred. Yeah, I think it was two thousand four fifty. Yeah, something like that. So it was a pretty substantial lease payment. Chances are these whoever the the tenant is has some some financial backing behind them, whether it be savings or maybe they're pulling something from a retirement account or something like that to make sure their bills are covered or whatever the the case may be it sounds like they must have some financing behind them that's allowing them to continue to move forward while they're while they're searching for jobs and stuff like that mm -hmm. if they're continuing to pay rent and they haven't been laid on any rent or anything else the fact that they approached and said hey look this is the situation we're in kudos to the tenant that's being upfront with the situation uh, and communicating about it early rather than once you get yourself into a bind. So that's an awesome, awesome thing for the tenant to do. Um, on the landlord side, what I would say is just return the favor. Be very communicative with them. Um, talk to them. See if they are having issues. If they know that they're going to be running out of money and might have to move or something like that. Just keep those lines of communication open. That's going to be your savior in a situation like this. They may find work. They may be back to work very quickly. You might not have to worry about anything. Uh, or it might turn into a situation where you're getting closer to them running out of funds, not being able to support the unit. And at that point, maybe you just say, okay, we understand your situation rather than go through the point where we're going to be losing rent and you're going to be losing, uh, you're going to be, you know, in eviction court or something like that, you know, maybe offer them the, the cash for keys or just let them out of their lease or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, this sounds like a situation where I wouldn't try to rake a tenant over the coals just because of the situation that they find themselves in. It's basically what it boils down to. Mm -hmm. So I would just communicate on it and, and see what happens. When it comes time to renew them, what I would do would be go through and uh, do a full, uh, a full check on them all over again. Verify their income. Uh, obviously, you are the landlord reference at that point, so you know where they're, where they're at on that. But I would verify the income and run the credit and background checks again just to make sure that something hasn't happened in that one year, they might be living off of a credit card or something like that. Their credit score might've gone from a 750 to a 550 real fast. Mm -hmm. So I would, I would just rescreen them when it's time for the lease renewal. And if everything checks out, it sounds like you have a good tenant. It sounds like the tenant's doing everything that they can to, to keep you in the loop and stay on the up and up and everything. So I would, I would just monitor it, but I don't think it's something to be too, too worried about yet. Okay. All right. I think that answers that pretty well too. Mm -hmm. All right. So third and final question of the day, this one came from Alex and uh, this one's come up in the group a few times and just, uh, I, forget, I apologize. I forget if it was a he or she that Alex is, but uh, uh, this person asked, what are the standards for late rent payments? So what do you charge typically? So I'll, I'll preface this by saying, check your state laws because every state's a little bit different as to what you can and can't charge for late fees and things like that. New York, like a reasonable amount, I think. I think it just says a reasonable amount. I don't think that there's actually anything New York from uh, a lot of the stuff that comes. They out. are even with like security deposit refunds. It's within a reasonable amount of time. It's there's not like an actual number of days specified. So, um, but as far as late rent, our policy is fifty dollar late fee as of the fifth of the month, and then two dollars a day late fee until the tenant is paid in full. Um, I've also seen some people who do, you know, X number of dollars on the fifth of the month. And then if they're still late as of the 10th, it's another X number of dollars. I've also seen some landlords will do like a percentage of the rent. So if you're, if you're late, then it's 5% of whatever the rent charge is, is your late fee, something like that. Uh, I think that's probably a little bit more common in like commercial leasing and things like that. Uh, but that's, that's kind of where I would be at on it. Uh, would be probably number one, check your state laws. Mm -hmm. and then number two, um, what we've been doing is the $50 plus the $2 a day late fee. So that's, that's kind of the, the route that we've been going. Yeah, actually, uh, Jen uh, Kuhn just said that Maryland only allows 5% of the rent after five days late. So yeah. another good example of checking your state laws. I think Florida off the top of my mind, cause I was just researching this. I commented on Alex's post, uh, mm -hmm. with this, I think Florida is another one that caps what you can charge for a late fee. Um, right. But uh, quick question on your scenario. So let's see, mm -hmm. you do $50 and let's say rents a thousand bucks a month. Mm -hmm. They're late. You charge them the 50 bucks. 
but they right. never actually get you the entire rent back for the entire month. Do you continue mm -hmm. to charge them that two dollars per day late fee then until you? Yeah, get uh, until they're until they're at zero balance, they continue to get charged that two dollars a day. Okay, so on the thirtieth, they're twenty five days late. So at that mm -hmm. point, there should be fifty dollars in your uh, scenario for the right. late fee, and then another right, $50. and then another fifty. So at right. that point, if they haven't paid rent, they owe eleven hundred dollars. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And if they gave you a thousand, then you'd say, "Hey, this two dollar a day late fee is still running because right. it's zero balance." Zero balance, exactly. Okay. And the way that we, the, our lease also specifies that late fees are considered an additional rent. Um, not myself, but another landlord that I know had a situation where um, a judge literally took late fees and threw them out. Like when they got to eviction court, the judge just threw out the late fees and said that they were aged, um, which in talking to that landlord after, we both got a chuckle at because if you call your mortgage company and say, I'm not paying this late fee because it's aged, they're, they're not going to accept that as, as, you know, as a proper answer. Um, so for a judge to just, uh, and we have very tenant friendly judges in New York state, I should say that, um, it, it just baffles me. Some of the things that judges have managed to throw out, I've had judges, you know, cause our lease also states that, uh, any damages caused by the tenant become additional rent. I've got, uh, you know, legal fees become additional rent. And the reason we call all of it additional rent is because it makes it a lot more difficult for a judge to separate those items out and say, well, no, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get your rent, but you're not going to get your late fees, your damages, your attorney's fees and everything else. This way it kind of becomes one giant ball of wax and it makes it a little bit more difficult for a judge to, to tear it apart, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I, that would be something that I would recommend that you put into your leases is that late fees, legal fees, uh, tenant repairs, all of that stuff should be considered additional rent and not separate separate fees. So that's something to, to, to keep in mind when you go to renew your leases as well. Okay. Yeah. That's a good tip. I like that. Yeah. All right. Well, if anybody else has any questions, I mean, you can always ask them to the Rent Prep for Landlords Facebook group. And every week, Andrew uh, goes through and picks out three or four great questions that he sees in the group that we address on this uh, conversation here. So uh, you can like our Facebook page. You can check out Andrew's Facebook page if you happen to be local in Buffalo or looking for investing opportunities in Buffalo. Uh, what's the name of that Facebook page again, Andrew? So that would be facebook.com slash Buffalo Foreclosed Homes. Buffalo Foreclosed with a D, Homes. Uh, I'm glad you plugged me because I was going to plug myself anyway. Um, now, that we're, now that we're starting to get into a little bit more technologically advanced recording setups here, uh, I plan on doing a lot more, uh, not necessarily more live broadcasts, but a lot more um, training videos, like how to, how to really look at a, a rental property and determine whether or not it's a good property to purchase and stuff like that. We're going to be doing a lot more of that stuff as time goes on once we have the setup and things like that. And then I also have an idea for at least one, if not maybe two different, um, like ongoing series that I want to do. So there's going to be a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff popping up on the Facebook page. Um, I would say definitely go ahead like that Facebook page, smash that like button, as they say on YouTube, um, <laughs> facebook.com slash Buffalo foreclosed homes. And then if you want to look me up personally, you can find me at facebook.com slash Andrew Schultz Buffalo. Okay. Um, and I think, I think my last name's on the screen, so I don't think I need to spell it out, but um, but yeah, it should be should be pretty good. I'm excited to to kind of get the ball rolling here. Excited to start engaging with our with our audience a little bit more, and we'll be good to go. All right, cool. Sounds good. Yeah. Well, until next week, Andrew. Thank you for taking the time and uh, for the insights as well. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.